guys, welcome back to Cooking with the Frisbees. I'm Beth, Keith is behind the camera. Oh. And today we are doing asabuco. What is it? It's a veal, <laughs> <laughs> it's a veal shank. So this is it, veal shank. Um, it's from a cow. The shank is basically the leg, right? So it's a section of the leg. Um, you cook it for many, many hours and it gets super tender and lovely and delicious. And actually the marrow inside is also really good for you. It's super healthy. Um, it's great for your digestive system. So we're going to go ahead and get into it. I've already floured a couple of these. I'm going to go ahead and do this one real quick. This is just plain flour. I already did salt and pepper on these guys and we're gonna brown them off in my Dutch oven. They do have to cook for a really, really, really long time if you can think about that part of the body. They're not gonna be super tender, so they're basically gonna be get really stewed. Okay, so I already have some water, or water, oil, on the stove, warming up. Let's go take these guys over. And looks like it's nice and warm. So I'm gonna start dropping these guys and brown them off. This is, when I go to Italian restaurants, this is the first thing that I look for on the menu. And if it's there, my decision is made. So this is our first time making this. Making we, it at home, correct. We happen to be in our local butcher shop on Saturday. Leonard's. Leonard's, shout out, downtown. Um, and we saw it and said, God, this would be a great episode for those that love it at Italian restaurants, but Maybe afraid to make it at home. So I put Beth on the spot and here we go. <laughs> I do hope it comes out well. I mean it's an expen it is an expensive cut of meat. Yes. Um I think two of them were forty dollars. Yeah. So it's a little bit more expensive. The kids are coming over for dinner tonight, so we will have somebody to share it with. Um but so I'm gonna get these guys all browned up. As soon as they're done on this side, I will flip them over, do the other side, then get the other two in the pan and do the same. Then we're gonna come back and add our vegetables. I've already chopped them so that they are ready to go. Carrots. Carrots, celery, onion, garlic. Then we have some thyme and rosemary out of the garden which we are just about out of time. Ha, 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 ha. You always say that. I know I do, I just love it. <laughs> I was completely out of time prior, and then somehow I was able to get one plant to it's continue a, it's growing. It's a weak it little plant down there. It was a very weak little plant. I mean, look at these spindly little things. I know, Beth told me to go down and cut some, and I was like, cut what? Go, what am I cutting off of here? They're a little spindly, but hey, we have it. We're gonna use it until we run out. So yeah. stay tuned. We'll be back. All right, guys, we've got brown. You see how beautiful that is? Look at that. That's what we're looking for, oh, right? Yeah. We're not cooking through. We're just browning them. Whoops. Uh -oh. <laughs> That would have been. That would have, could that, have been disastrous. That would have, that would have been Tyler's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so these guys are done. This is too much burnt in my pan for me to feel good about putting my vegetables in it. So first, I'm going to clean out my pan. Then I'm going to get started on softening my vegetables, and then. It goes in the oven for no lie guys, one and a half to two hours. Like I said, this isn't a soft piece of meat. 
We've got to cook it low and slow. It's going to go 325 degrees for almost two hours so that we can get a nice softness to it. The marrow has to cook through the bone. Remember, these are bone in. Marrow has to cook through the bone as well. And then they should almost, they, they should will be, pull away from the bone. They will be fall off the bone. It's the Boston yes. butt of the cow, I guess, <laughs> but a lot more expensive. Yes a lot more expensive so we'll be back all right now we're ready for our veg so we did clean out the pan it is a process because the pan was screaming hot so oh. <laughs> so keith used his fire retardant gloves and he cleaned it out there's a little bit left of residue but that's the pretty color one right not the that's essence that's the caramelization and not the my dad burnt. my dad always called it essence essence don't throw that essence out of that pan so we're gonna go ahead i've got some olive oil in the pan i'm gonna start with my onions and get them going oops a carrot got in there i think it's okay we'll be okay i think so we'll be okay So we're gonna go ahead and get the onions going. Then I'll add my carrots and my, I, these are uh, two carrots and two stalks of celery, not huge stalks. And then I do have some garlic that I'll add at the last minute before we start adding in our liquid. We're gonna add wine, we're gonna add chicken stock, we're gonna add thyme, we're gonna add rosemary, and then we're gonna throw everybody back in the pool and get into the oven. So. The other thing we're going to serve this with is polenta. Polenta you can buy in the stores, pre-made, you can reheat. And That's not who we are. <laughs> but polenta, all polenta is, it's just cooked cornmeal. That's what so I thought. We're going to do our own cooked cornmeal, which is why this pot is back here. So I have a polenta is made four to one. Rice is one to one. Polenta is four to one. So I'm going to put, this is four cups of chicken stock, and I'm gonna put one cup of cornmeal in there when we are ready to make. Now, it does take about 30 minutes to cook, so I gotta keep track of what I'm cooking. What's cooking good looking? No, uh, did uh, I just say uh -oh. that? I did. I'm not gonna edit that out either. Oh, yep. okay. Here we go. All right, these guys are going. Let me get something here. There we go. The onions are going. Gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to this. Oops, an onion just went flying somewhere and I have no idea where it landed. Add a little bit of salt to this. I'm using Himalayan pink salt. Fresh cracked pepper. Always yummy. As soon as these start to get a little bit trans, look at that one little carrot amongst the sea of onions. Color. <laughs> okay, they're starting to get translucent, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest, which is carrots and celery. Oh yeah. A little mirepoix of veg. I don't want these to brown, to be really honest. I want them just to become a little bit soft, right? Because they're going to be the base for what, oops, sorry, my veal shanks sit on as they stew in the oven. So I'm gonna give this a couple more minutes and then I'll be ready to start adding some more of the liquids to it. White wine, a little chicken stock, and some herbs. Be right back. All right, these guys have been going a little bit. I did wait to put the garlic in because I don't want the garlic to overcook or burn. 
So these guys have been going for a minute. They're getting tender. I'm gonna go ahead and add my wine. This is a cup of dry white. Ooh, sizzle. We're gonna let that cook off just a little bit. I'm turning up the heat just to get that wine to evaporate a little bit. I've got some thyme and rosemary. Mm, if I could live in an herb garden, <laughs> I think I would. It does smell good. Between the basil and the thyme and the rosemary and the oregano, which funny story. So I said, Keith, babe, while I'm getting this stuff ready to cook, can you run down and get me some more oh, thyme? He said, sure, no problem. I'll be right back. Not time. <laughs> they, they look awful similar. You think so? Mm-hmm. Oregano. Time. I just went after the healthy one because I didn't think you were talking about that raggedy bush that was down there by that pepper plant that's dying. This is the only time I have. We are out of time. Oh, I really did not have great success with my herbs this year. It was a tough gardening season all the way around. Yeah. I do think some of it, though, is the yard, um, which is required in our neighborhood. They require you to use a pesticide on your lawn to help keep pests Make it look pretty. Away. Um, so they require it. But I do think, unfortunately, it is my herbs are suffering because of it. I do think because they're right up against the lawn. Well, and there's a, some other things too. I mean, we had to pivot and buy compost somewhere else. We don't know. I don't know. It that was a different compost that we never actually used before. Don't know that could, you can trust it. It could yeah. have been contaminated. It was very generic. We had, an, we had an entire bed that didn't do well. Yeah. Like, and then the high heat and it was just tough all the way around. It was a tough year. But anyway, so it was fun though. I got the last of my little cherry tomatoes. I made some salsa this weekend. Yep. I used some green tomatoes and made oh, some that. verde, salsa verde. You just did that today. Yeah, I did this morning. Because we still have tomatoes on the vine, but they're just... They're, they're not turning red. So I just went ahead That's and good. used a jalapeno and some green onions and just made a salsa verde. It's really good. You haven't tasted it yet, but I'll... Anyways, back to <laughs> Sabuco. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. I've let that wine cook out a little bit. I'm throwing these sprigs of thyme and rosemary in whole. I'm going to let them come up to temperature. I'm going to start the oven. I'm going to put a lid on this and we're going to go in the oven. So I'll be back in just a minute. All right, this is it. We're going to nestle these guys back in on top of, gosh, these are some huge veal shanks. They are. <laughs> They're really large. Okay. But they will cook down. You'll see. Look at that bumbly deliciousness. And we're gonna put a lid on it. Yikes. Lid. And then it's gonna go into the oven at 325 for one and a half to two hours. I'll check on it after an hour and then I'll check on it probably every 15 minutes thereafter. So we'll see how it does. But you can not miss the ending because it's amazing. Let's hope. Stay tuned. Hi, Bella. Look at that pretty girl. Bella and then came to I visit. I also have to make the gremolata. Hi, Bella. All right, it's that time. Going in the oven. Lid on. Oh my goodness. 
<laughs> so heavy. <laughs> All right, we're in. We're gonna go ahead. It's not quite to temp, but I've got to get this in What's the oven, or we're gonna eat at ten o'clock at night. What temperature are you looking for? I'm looking for three twenty-five. Okay. It's three o five. I had it on the the stove, so I'm just gonna put it in the oven. Go ahead and let it get come to temp. We're gonna cook this thing for an hour. Check it. See you soon. Now. One of the great things about the Asabuco, it's a heavy dish. It's got a lot of veal, meaty, it's lovely and luscious. And we're gonna serve it over some polenta, which is also has a lot of texture and, and flavor. So what I'm gonna do is lighten it up a little bit with a little bit of gremolata. So, this is just parsley. I'm gonna chop this up pretty fine. And then we're gonna add some lemon and some garlic and some olive oil. And it's just gonna top it off so that it's a little, adds a little freshness, especially right now, end of summer, early fall. Dishes can get a little heavy. This is gonna be a lot of freshness. This is a couple tablespoons. You are in my way. Oh my gosh, it smells so fresh. So we're gonna add this. I'm also going to zest a lemon. A little lemon zester. These lemons are not fresh. <laughs> I won't even zest it. They're not fresh enough. Let's see, do we have enough fresher one? <laughs> There we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Got a fresher one. All right, great little lemon zester. Zest this little puppy. Clearly you need a very fresh lemon to be able to zest it with this tool. I'm struggling. It's zesty. Hmm? It's zesty. It's zesty. It's not fast, but... Yeah, it was a little difficult. But, so, we have an entire lemon zested. Parsley in the bowl. Zest in the bowl. Garlic in the bowl. There we go. And now just enough olive oil to incorporate it. Get a little spoon. Gosh, it smells lovely. Just enough. This is just going to finish off on top of hmm. This is what's going to finish off our asabuco when we're done. We're still working on it. Stay with me. Okay, it's been an hour. We need to check on it, see how it's going. I did put on these other gloves, Keith's gloves, because I know it's hot. I mean, it's in here at 325. Oops. 
All right, let's see what it looks like. Oh, oh, yes. That's a not quite pull apart, but we're getting there. That looks good. It's got looks a ways amazing. To go. Has a little more ways to go. So I'm gonna put the lid back on, shove it back in, let it go for at least another 30 minutes. And in the meantime, I've got my polenta boiling. So, come with me. Over here. Hello, lovely. So what I have is four cups of, oh, here it is. Four cups of chicken stock boiling and you can use any kind of cornmeal I'm um, a lot of people like their cornmeal their polenta to be a little larger this is a really 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 fine cornmeal I like it I think it makes my polenta a little smoother but I'll show it to you let me get my Measuring cup. Remember, I said it's four to one. So we got only one cup of polenta. Just a little bit of a mess. Now, the biggest piece of this, especially since this polenta is really, really fine, whisk, whisk, whisk as you pour it in. You don't want clones. It's super whiskey. Now we've got it incorporated. We're going to turn it down. Now, typically you would use, you can use plain water and then you would salt the water. But because I'm using chicken stock, I'm not going to salt anything. So, here's where we go. Polenta is typically known as a difficult dish, or not difficult, but a really needy dish, as is asabuco. But the great thing is a little bit goes a long way. So, I'm going to go ahead. Now that I have this all incorporated, and I'm just going to put my lid on it, sit it on simmer, on simmer, and I'm just gonna come back every five or six minutes and stir it again. Then we have some freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano that we're gonna add to it. So, stick with me. I know this is a long one. Stick with me. This is polenta. You just have to stir it a lot. This is what, five minutes after we just put that in? Yeah. Wow, it thickened up nicely though. Well, it will. That looks good. What's the gravy in the pan over there? So this is going to be a roux that I started, just flour and butter, and I'm going to use it to thicken up my sauce after the veal is done. I'll strain everything off in the pan and then make a lovely sauce for it to go. But this has got to continue going. All right. It has been an hour and a half. We're gonna come in here. I thought this was the It depends on the size. It, it's so heavy. Ah! Oh my gosh. Look at that, look at that. Yeah, that's starting to look really good. That's amazing. So, ow really hot 
Okay, so what we're gonna do from here is I'm gonna go ahead, take these guys out, put them on the platter. I'm gonna take the vegetables, strain the vegetables out, and only use the stock to try, not to try, to make a beautiful sauce that will go over these guys. Now our polenta as well, look, I added, good. it's gorgeous, and I added a little bit of um, Parmigiana Reggiano to it, a little creaminess, so stick around. So these guys are coming out, oops, I want to leave all the thyme and everything else in it. Oh, oh I got on my shoe. go taking all this out so I'm gonna drain this all of this broth I don't think it's gonna be pretty I'm using my husband <laughs> Fire retarding gloves because that pan's hot. it's a it's super you hot. Want to do that there, or you want to do it in the sink? I was gonna do it in the sink, but oh no, you got it. That's a good angle. Oh, that's good. Yeah. We'll let that drain. Then I'm gonna bring it up. That's lovely in the background. Back there, <laughs> Sneezing. Up. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's probably it's allergy time. October allergies. Yep. You okay, buddy? All right. So. Those so are you're done. not using that anymore. That is like trash. Well, I mean, I can save it for something, but that, I mean, for tonight, yes. But the idea so, is you get this. This, right? So this is the gravy. Okay. So I'm gonna bring this up to heat, and that's why I made the roux. So I can brown this, and then add the roux to make a little slurry, and a little sauce. All right, we're ready for this. Okay, polenta, perfectly cooked. A gorgeous piece of, oops. Asabuco. Some gravy. Gremolata, let's finish it. This is it. This little bit of gremolata is gonna add a little freshness to this dish. That's it guys. See you soon. So Tyler has never had this, or maybe not ever, so he's gonna be our test dummy. The guinea pig here. Really nope. shot your case. Good up. Yeah? That's unbelievable. That's a winner? Yeah. It's good, oh, yeah. right? Yay! All right. Killer. That's it, guys. It's a winner. Killer. <laughs>